Colombia, 52 million inhabitants, a fascinating and complex mix of people, culture and age-old traditions. Thirty-two departments, extremely different from one another, each with its own history and rhythms. Some of them with an identity distorted by the Spanish conquest of the 16th century and today threatened by what we call progress. A land full of totally contrasting landscapes, mega cities like Bogota, the green hills of Boyacá, the greenery of the banana and coffee plantations of Quindío, the humid Amazon rainforest, the wild beaches of Chocó and the paradisiacal ones of the Caribbean Sea. All different ecosystems living interconnected with each other. During our six months trip, we were lucky enough to get to know some of the indigenous groups in the south of the country, as well as the friendly Afro-Colombian communities on the Pacific coast. In the last stage of this journey around Colombia, we will visit an arid, desert land, the cradle of the Waju ethnic group, keepers of ancestral, mystical and still somewhat unknown histories. So join me in this new adventure among the dunes of La Guajira. La Guajira is located in the extreme north of Colombia, in the Caribbean plains. Our journey starts from Rio Hacha, the capital of the department. The first stop is going to be the Manaure Salt Flats, 70 kilometers further north. The Manaure Salt Flats are one of the most spectacular places in Colombia. In addition, it is the most important place for the exploitation of sea salt in the country. Every year, more than 1 million tons of salt are extracted, corresponding to 70% of the country's total capacity. These enormous mountains of salt are in the middle of a magical sea that turns pink, thanks to a crustacean that is responsible for cleaning the salt water. As flamingos and shrimps consume this animal, they take on this coloration that characterizes them so much. The salt flats belong to the Waju families, who are in charge of the entire salt process in an artisanal and manual manner. Time to get to Cabo de la Vela, a remote desert village on Colombia's northern tip. Spanish explorer Juan de la Cosa was among the first Europeans to see the Cape in 1499, making this the first place ever visited by Europeans on South American mainland. The aboriginal of this area were an ethnic group called Arawaks, who were never defeated by the Spanish conquistadors. Their descendants, the Waju people, still inhabit the area. Cabo de la Vela is a sacred place to them, a sort of gate to the afterlife, since they believe it is the place where the souls of all the deceased travel to rest with the ancestors. The climate, especially on the peninsula, is arid, dry, and with high temperatures, modified by the sea breezes and the winds that blow during most of the year. Precipitation is scarce and usually occurs during the months of September to November. One of the places where it is worth stopping and connecting with the surrounding nature is Playa Arcoiris, a place that seems out of time, sculpted by furious waves and relentless winds. Twenty minutes from this site, there's the Pilon de Azúcar, a hill with a beautiful view. According to its inhabitants, this pilon was a guide for the first settlers who sailed through the Caribbean Sea. It is greatly adored by the Waju people. They call it Kamaichi, which means Lord of the Things of the Sea.
The first day ended watching the sunset from the lighthouse, on a cliff overlooking the ocean. I spent the first night sleeping in Cabo de la Vela, on the shore of the calmest sea I've ever seen, on a hammock, one of the symbols of the colorful Wajú craftsmanship. The beauty of the place made me wake up at dawn, just when the fishermen returned from their fishing trip, and the village was still asleep. It is difficult to find words to describe the tranquility of this place. Due to the favorable weather condition, La Guajira is key to the growth of wind energy in Colombia. 31 wind farms are planned in the next three years. More than 40 wind farms are expected to be built by 2034, representing an installed capacity of more than 8,000 megawatts. Most of these projects are located mainly in the collective territory of the Wajú people, whose territories are unalienable, imprescriptible, also that cannot be rented or purchased. Therefore, project developers must reach agreements with local communities that include payments of agreed benefits within the framework of the consultation, as well as compensation for potential socio-environmental impacts. The agreements are reached within the legal framework of the CITA Previa, a bilateral negotiation between the company and the community. From this point forward, one of the most touching scenarios I've ever witnessed in my whole life. While men rest in the shade, hundreds of women and children block the road in the hope of receiving food or water from the passing cars. Throughout the journey, we passed about 800 of these checkpoints. The Waju are a thousand-year-old population representing the 38% of the population of the Department of La Guajira. In total, there are approximately 500,000 people, 255,000 of which living in Venezuela, and 185,000 in Colombia. Their language is called Wayunaki. The Waju are characterized by being a community organized by families. Every family has a surname, and this surname is taken from the mother and not from the father, as it is customary in other societies.
buenos días. ¿Dos mil? Cuatro mil. ¿Cuatro mil? No, no, pero agarra, no, no la agarres toda. Uno, uno. Uno. A una sola. Uno solo, dale. Agarra dos, con ese. Dos, bueno. Ah, Gracias. Chao. Chao. Garbage is a serious problem. Everything that arrives here remains here, trapped between the dry branches of the plants or the thorns of the cacti. And we, by bringing all these necks, are unfortunately part of the problem. Some families try to give back the plastic they use, but it's a small thing. Unfortunately, it is impossible to bring something to give to everyone. Son tres. ¿Quieres más? Sí. <ríe> si me dices gracias. gracias. Ah, bueno. Lunch of the day is scheduled by the ocean at Playa Taroa, a beach covered in millions of beautiful white shells. never stops blowing in this part, so much so that some plants adapt to it. The next destination is the sand dunes of Taroa, a fascinating amalgam of sand, sky and sea. After a swim in these very salty waters, there is room for some fun with a 4x4 among the desert sand.
Coca-Cola. ¿Qué tiene de fresco? Coca-Cola, Jayton, Fonimarta, Coca-Cola. Mm. Cerveza. ¿Qué cerveza tiene? Pues. Bueno, ¿tiene vuelta de 50? Sí, mi amor. Eh, entonces, uno, dos, tres. Regálame tres, por favor. Tres, gracias. Sí, gracias. La arepa rellena de langosta. La arepa rellena de tiburón. ¿De tiburón? ¿De tiburón? Sí, señor. Ay, ese es mi hermano. <risa> We just arrived in Punta Gallinas, the northernmost point of the whole South America. Except for a lighthouse, there is nothing to see in Punta Gallinas, but with a little imagination on the horizon, you can see Central America and the Caribbean islands. Third day of travel. Today we start going back. Many hours of travel are expected, with a short stop to get a beautiful view over the bay. We will spend the rest of the day and the night here, on Playa Mayapó. The last experience to live before definitively leaving La Guajira is to spend time in Aguayú Rancheria, where you have the opportunity to learn more about their habits and customs. The rancheria in question is called Pirruatemana, where we have been greeted with a refreshing juice containing chirrinchi, also known as the desert alcohol or the Wayu alcohol. Part of the welcome is also a good lunch with local flavor, obviously vegetarian. Quiero quedar bonito, ¿sí? <risa> Creo que va a ser una misión difícil. <risa> Pero... <risa> dale, dale, dale. Digo que... <risa> Listo, ahora Listo, sí puedes reír. Que... ¿Cómo queda? Lindo. Como siempre. <risa>
Two nice kids introduced me to the place. They explained me how they live, what plants they use, what animal they raise, and above all, what development project they are implementing for the community, such as this vegetable garden or this well. They also showed me what it is used to produce chirrinchi, the alcoholic drink made from cane sugar, and this production process. The most important Waju dance is the Jonna, a traditional dance used to honor guests. It is also used when two families meet or present marriage candidates. They gather in a circle to watch the development of the Jonna after hearing the beating of a drum-like instrument, the Kasha. The woman goes around the Pioi, approaches the man, turns to present herself to the audience and dances with the man until she gets tired or throws him to the ground since these are the only two reasons for abandoning the dance floor and give a new partner a turn. of the Waju culture and all indigenous cultures around the world is immense. It helps us know where we came from and above all, where we can go. La Guajira is a land that at least once in their life any citizen of the world should visit, not only to get to know unique and marvelous landscapes, but also to understand more about the cultural diversity that holds one of the departments most affected by poverty, but with a community rising rapidly thanks to tourism. This was the perfect ending for my six months trip around Colombia, the most incredible time of my life. I'm not going to leave with a goodbye, because I know that we'll meet again. So, hasta luego, tierra querida. <laughs>